Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm excited to bring you my review for The Dark Tower, Book 5, Wolves of the Kala. Woo! My friend let me borrow some RGB lights and I am having way too much fun with them. What color should we go with for the review? Um, The natural warm looks, you know, pretty relaxing and cool, but let's go with blue just to spice it up a little bit so i have just finished reading the dark tower five wolves of the kala with illustrations by the brilliantly talented bernie wrightson now this is a bit of a lie i said i just finished reading the wolves of the kala i actually just finished reading the entire series that's right i was too excited i couldn't bear to stop and film these reviews i just needed to know what happened next i read song of susanna in literally one and a half days and that's not a small book at all so yeah i'm going to be bringing you my review and i feel that because i've read this series the reviews will be stronger in retrospect because i can comment on uh the effects of foreshadowing in the text and also elements that come into play in future and how i believe they were used to set up in the current book that i will be reviewing so let's get into it also, I'm going to have no restraint on spoilers because I feel like if you stuck with me this far, you're fans of the Dark Tower. And if you're reading them along with me, I'll just say this. Read Wolves of the Kala. It's one of the most awesome books in the series by far. So jumping right into it, I just want to say I think Wolves of the Kala represents an absolute turning point in the Dark Tower series. And it feels like King has he has the series finished in his head because at the other books he has admitted that when he started writing them he did not have them all fully fleshed out and then at the beginning of this he says that i have the i know where the story is going now which allows king to set up the future events of the books and he does it so well this really feels like a turning point and it introduces many um elements that we haven't experienced before such as the ability of going toe dash mia is introduced um it all i'm gonna get into this later but it sets up massive things that play huge roles in the book but this the vibe is completely different than the other four books before this whereas they felt like more disjointed adventures this is the first book that really feels like here is what is going to come and here are the stakes this is our goal now we know what has to happen when prior to this it was just roland walking to the tower and experiencing things along the way with the quartet. So the basic outline of this book, I loved. It's a Seven Samurai, um, Magnificent Seven kind of retelling with the quartet, and it also introduces new members to the quartet. And this, by far, has probably some of the best drop-in cameo characters. I mean, we had Nasher and the TikTok Man and the pubes and stuff in uh, uh, book three and we had jack and Alindi and enrico balazar and um all of them in book two but in this we get andy the robot who's an absolute threat and a half that guy is crazy we get um a new member of the ted of 19 with uh father callahan we were also introduced to in full effect the low men who are absolutely freaking chilling we are introduced to um Benny Slightman the Elder and Benny Slightman Jr., who are awesome characters. Zalia Jaffertz, and we just so many awesome characters get brought into play in this book, and I loved it because I feel like, um, it, I shouldn't say that in episode in book four, we got uh, awesome characters. I kind of forget book four because it's a flashback, um. So I feel like that's past events, but book four, we also get introduced to a ton of new characters and actually more so than Wolves of the Kala, but the Wolves of the Kala, they're players that affect the current journey to the tower. So they're that much more kind of irrelevant and urgent the way they play into the story. And I love them. Andy was a standout to me. I found Andy so intriguing and I, I kind of knew from the second they introduced him that something was off about the guy because uh, the way he said he knows when the wolves are coming and he can't tell because of his programming. And Roland says, who programmed him to say that? I need to know these things. And we also introduced to the Dogen. That's another thing I forgot to mention. But I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Andy is awesome. And I loved his introduction as a character. And more so the character that really um, is the biggest player that we're introduced to here is Donald Callahan. He is just incredible. I think Callahan was a really awesome introduction to the Tet because... He introduces us to the many other worlds that there are. And we know from book one that Gunslinger, there are other worlds than these. And we know there are worlds where Jake is alive. And henceforth, he gets brought into uh, the book again in uh, the drawing, of, or not drawing of three, in the Wastelands. But Callahan tells his tale 
and I absolutely loved everything about Callahan. Where and I have never read Salem's Law, so this when this crossover event for me was like holy crap what's happening here and little did i know that this crossover was only a small appetite for the stuff to come later so callahan telling a story of the many different americas he visited it really helped the theories i had in my mind kind of slowly come to realization and actualize and i was going okay there really are it's not just parallel worlds there are full-on insane other dimensions where such drastic stuff is going on that plays into the greater king universe and that was so exciting to explore and so exciting to experience and callahan as a person i really enjoyed his character and what he brought to the ted he brought a very different energy to the vibe you know we've got roland the cold-hearted killer who's on a man on a mission we've got eddie the wisecracker with a heart of gold Susanna, who is the, the multi-dimensional in every sense of the word um, who brings this kind of wise maternal aspect to the group and she really cares for everyone and then we've got Jake the kind of young innocent kid learning and experiencing as we go along with them and now Donald Callahan he brings in a guy who is probably the most knowledgeable guy in the tet regarding other worlds and stuff like that so and he also has this kind of old wise attitude to him where he's kind of like the opposite of Roland where everyone has elements of Roland but Callahan is like the traveler and the wanderer to the furthest extent. And even when we see, and just going back to Callahan's stories of when he is pushed out of the top of a building and his death brings him back to the way station, looping us around to book one. I thought that was so darn cool and I couldn't get over how just exciting his storyline was. And uh, so, yeah, I've talked enough about Callahan and how awesome he is. So let's move on to the imminent threat the wolves of the Kala. Now, the wolves I thought were just absolutely awesome. Um, the illustrations too really just kind of bring home how threatening they are, and you know people have been fighting these things off for decades and decades, and they have no explanation for these people. They have no, uh, the, the folk of the Kala have no real insight on what the wolves are, or how they can be defeated. So let me just show you that illustration there is just so damn cool that is just fucking awesome part of my language and we can see this chilling wolf mask here in the green uh hood and the plate of oriza going through i just thought that was so cool and it really makes them such a threat because i'm like what well, are they wolves that crawl on you know all fours but then we realize that they had they got lightsabers and they're humanoid and they ride in on steel horses and i was like what is what is going on here so this just takes all the world smashing elements and throws them into, you know, a blender here. And we have to sit here and experience it. And I was just hooked from this, like from the second they got to the Kala and we learned about these wolves, I was hooked. And it just, it finally feels like we're getting some answers. But every time we get an answer, that leads us to five more questions, such as what the hell is Thunderclap? Where are these wolves coming from? Who is their master? Who and what is the Crimson King? And when we learn all this later on it becomes so satisfying to be like oh my god like this is a grand scale operation so we don't know what the children are used for the twins that are taken or where they go and what happens them at thunderclap so it, this book just sets up such a mystery for us while introducing us to core elements that are going to be consistent from the rest or for the rest of the books going forward now before i get to the massive mic drop at the end here um oh one more thing i want to talk about Toadash. We're introduced to the element of Toadash in Black 13 and the cave door. Now, and this was so awesome. It's a, th this book is just so layered. And so I completely forgot about the subplot with the book collector, which leads into what I was going to talk about at the end. So on top of them trying to solve this Kala business, we're brought back to the vacant lot and the relevance of the vacant lot in the Tet's journey because... You kind of let this stuff slip out of your mind during Wizard and Glass because you're so enthralled with Will Dearborn and Roland's past life. It's all so exciting that we kind of forget where we are in the story. And I forget while I'm reading this. And then all of a sudden, we learn about this guy who collects these books who owns the rights to this vacant lot. And so Roland and the Ted have to go through Todash, I don't know what you want to call it, through the Todash space and then interact with these people and try and get this lot so they can protect the Rose. And that's another element that's so introduced. And then when I, when, he, when he drops that Salem's lot, I'm like, whoa, 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 
what is this guy's name? It's escaping my head. The little book collector. And he, um, anyway, I forget his name, but Stephen King got name dropped, I believe, in The Wastelands very subtly. Or maybe it was earlier in this book. There's so much that goes on. I can't really remember it all. But Jake sees... It had to be in this book early on. Jake sees um, Stephen King's name in the Cafe of the Mind. And I was like, well, I hope they elaborate on that. And it's not just a one-off thing. Because there are these all these Easter eggs throughout King books where he references his own work as fiction. Such as in The Dead Zone, someone references the book Carrie. And even in Drawing of the Three, Eddie references the film The Shining. So I'm like, oh, okay. So Stephen King has to exist in some capacity. Well, that's really weird. I don't know how I feel about that. Or if they're just Easter eggs and reading too much into it. Turns out I wasn't reading too much into it, and it's all extremely relevant in The Dark Tower. So before I touch on the final climax of this, I just want to say that the, the, the battle at the end of the book, when the wolves and Roland all fight, it felt a little, the writing on it was a little anticlimactic. I couldn't really grasp like what was going on, who was going where, and I was kind of distracted at different parts. So um, on a technical level, the writing for the end scene didn't really do it for me. It kind of brought me out because I was just kind of confused with everything that was going on. And the, the wolves are made to be such a threat, and then they just end up scoping off these um, discs on their head. But then again, I guess if that's their weakness, that's their weakness. And I guess they would have noticed it before because they have the hoods to cover that. But um, I don't know. Why didn't they just build a little shell around it? Well, then again, I guess it would interfere with a little radar dish. But point is, the writing at the end of it, uh, at, the, at the battle, kind of slipped away but then that entire battle becomes irrelevant when they go to the cave door and roland opens up this chest of collector books and what do we have inside salem's lot by stephen king which is the story of per callahan who is a character in the book we're currently reading so is per callahan fictitious well i guess i'll have to read the next book to find out so when callahan's flipping through this thing he's like this is my life story us as the audience is also going, um, what, who, where, how? And I was like, okay, the second I finished this book, I was like, I need to go straight to Song of Susanna and tear through it, which I did. I whipped through it in like two days, not even like it was insane how fast I read Song of Susanna. But when that freaking King name drop with Salem's Lot happens and Per Callahan goes through and says, this is my life story. It is so freaking exciting i'm i'm trying to contain myself because people are asleep in my house and it's like two in the morning when i'm recording this but i'm so excited fucking talking about it that was just such a like <laughs> mind blown so the every element king sets up in this book is so exciting and this really is like it starts off as like a side quest book and i'm like oh god not like I didn't mind um, Wizard and Glass because I like hearing about Roland's life, but I need progress to the tower. And Roland is now doing this side quest to help this town defend against some guys. Like, come on. But then I'm like, oh, wait a second. What's the Dogen? What's Thunderclap? What are these wolves doing every 20 or so years? Does this have anything to do with Pennywise from It? And then we get Black 13. And then we get Toad Ash and all this stuff tying in with the, the vacant lot. And I was like... King buddy, I shouldn't have doubted you for a second, man. You knew what you were doing, and I just got to sit here and enjoy the ride. And enjoy the ride I freaking did. This book was so awesome. I absolutely loved it. So, yeah. Um, Wolves of the Kala, more like 10 out of the 10. Like, <laughs> the book was absolutely amazing. And it did everything it needed to do to get me so excited to read the next books. And even when I finished The Wastelands, I wasn't like, boom like super eager to get on to a wizard and glass i was like oh I, c I can wait to experience what happens here with uh with blaine the mono but when this book ended i was like okay went to my bookshelf picked up song of Susanna, and i was like we're good to go that's it well like, let's read and then i put that down and i immediately read the final dark tower book which ooh, <laughs> emotions to come my folk and but anyways you know how I feel about the book. I absolutely loved it. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, I'm going to get some reaction videos out for you guys soon. We got lots of stuff on the menu. And then after this video, I'm going to release my Dark Tower Villains casting. So keep an eye on that. 
So yeah, if you enjoy the content, feel free to like, share, subscribe, and uh, shares really help. You say, hey, look at this guy's thoughts on the Dark Tower. This guy's kind of entertaining to listen to him rant about Stephen King. So whatever you guys think, please give a listen, give a watch, and give a share, give a like, give a comment. But um, oh, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Thank you guys for watching, and have a lovely, lovely day.